Hey everybody, my name is Joe Piveronis. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm that covers disruptive tech investing for a broad audience of retail and institutional investors across the globe. Today, we're gonna to talk about a company called Beco Group, and the title on this slide says 50% off. Well, the company is in fact trading at 50% off compared to what shares traded at a year ago. As you can see here, the stock has fallen quite drastically. And while we don't pay much attention to short-term price movements, it certainly merits a look to see now that their year-end results are out, what the company's been up to. It's been about a year since we checked in with them. Now, tech sh shares have been falling across the board, so it's no surprise that Beco Group would join the lot. Now, the first thing we've noticed that is a big change of course, is the company's name. The last time we looked at this firm, they were called Selink. Now they've changed their name to Beco Group. And the reason that they've done that is because they are changing their focus from just being involved in 3D bioprinting, which was the original thesis we were attracted to, to now doing a whole lot of different things. Now, throughout 2021, they made nine different acquisitions. That's quite a few by any measure. They paid $553 million. And by the way, everything in this presentation is US dollar because more than half of our audience is from the US. And the numbers you see here are uh, have all been translated. So $553 million paid for these companies. You can see in the table here what they paid for each. Uh, these contributed $57 million, about 47% of 2021 revenues. Now, it's important to note that organic revenues increased by 44% for Beco Group in 2021. So they're not just growing revenues by acquiring what they say are profitable companies with anywhere under $20 million in revenues, but they're also growing their organic products as well. Now, it's interesting to look at the variety of firms that they've been acquiring. You have uh, what advanced sample preparation, automated workflow software, diagnostic tests using robots. This firm down here, Nanoscribe, they're quite interesting. So we looked at them, I believe in 2020, they're developing a 3D printer that um, prints extremely small things. We'll put the article in the description of this video because it's a very interesting company. And if you're an investor in Beco Group, you would probably be interested in that product that they've now acquired. So Beco Group has been expanding quite a bit and that begs the question, well, what do they do? They're not doing just 3D bioprinting. They're now doing something they refer to as bioconvergence. And you can see here, this is similar to what St. Steve Jobs talked about before he died, was that the great breakthroughs of tomorrow will be at the convergence of software and biology and chemistry. And as you can see here, that's what this diagram shows us. So you have AI and cloud computing and robotics and big data and all the aspects of uh, biological advancements converging on this great era. And what Beco Group does is they provide the picks and shovels for all the great things that are happening in life sciences. Now, what's most exciting is the revenue growth that we see here. And 44%, as we said before, in 2021 compared to 2020 for organic growth. And this is quarterly whilst we would usually show annual revenues this company is growing so fast that it requires a quarterly revenue chart to show just how quickly they're able to grow now when we look at the breakdown of revenues here and don't pay too much attention to this chart other than that line which shows the percentage of consumables based on total revenue so you can see blue that would be consumables. And the line shows that they're about 20% of total revenues right now. This firm has 25,000 machines out in the field, and those are all resulting in consumables. And we really like this business model, the razor blade model, because companies that um, purchase machines and then buy a lot of consumables, in some cases, you can almost give the machines away because the consumables are high margin and provide a cash cow. Illumina is a great example of this business model working perfectly. Now, when we look at how 
Bico Group has valued. I recall, uh, could have been a year ago, we were looking at this simple valuation ratio, which takes the market cap and divides it by annualized revenues. In this case, annualized revenues are 57 million times four. Uh, it was a, that's the quarterly times four annualize it and you get 5.65. Now it says Schrodinger there, that's, be, that's a copy paste error. This is for Bico Group. So let's just round that up to six. Well, and recall when we looked before, it was trading above 40 and we don't invest in companies with a simple valuation ratio over 40. This number is quite low for Bico Group and their shares have been beaten down whilst revenues have soared. And that combination is what drives that simple valuation ratio down significantly. So the one reservation we might have about the company is that they're still quite small at a $1.3 billion market cap. They're just above our market cap cutoff of 1 billion. Uh, it's the most risky category of companies. Um, Bico Group used to be quite small and they've only in the past year or so graduated to uh, being a, above a billion dollars. Now, we're trying to reduce our exposure to small caps and increase our exposure to large caps as risk averse investors. So adding shares of Bico Group increases our overall small cap exposure. So that's just something that we need to consider. Um, when it comes to owning foreign stocks, we particularly like that because it provides foreign currency exposure and reduces our own domestic bias. You can have better valuations for firms that are trading abroad, flying under the radar. Uh, it also avoids the ARC effect, which is that ARC has historically avoided making international investments and only focuses domestically so that when they do a bunch of selling, it doesn't drive down the price of the stock, though we see tech stocks falling across the board. A downside, of course, is that information can be very difficult to dissect. If you take a look at the annual report, from Bico Group. There's a lot of good information in there, but some of it is really difficult to read. You have to do currency translations on the fly. So generally speaking, foreign firms are a bit more difficult to follow than domestic firms. And then of course we have two tickers. So Bico trades in the Stockholm exchange, that's where uh, we bought shares and you'll need to translate some um, US dollar most likely or whatever your native currency is into Swedish Krona and buy shares on the Stockholm exchange, or you can buy shares on the pink sheet exchange under this ticker CLLKF. I talked to the subscriber just before this presentation who told me that the spread was ridiculous. So the bid ask spread was something like, you know, $10 to $20. So if you don't know what a bid ask spread is, don't trade shares on the pink sheet market. Uh, there's not a lot of liquidity and they do have these exorbitant bid ask spreads though and always make sure when you check those you do it during trading hours because sometimes they'll spread quite significantly after hours so just be wary of that we don't ever use the pink sheet mechanism we've actually talked to that exchange about these what you'd call adrs american depository receipts they are legitimate but they're market makers that are that are providing this favor they always have you know they're not doing it for free and they'll, those spreads are where they'll capture some alpha um, so just to conclude in looking at the annual report for bico group and the collateral that came with it nothing but good news especially on the revenue growth front these rapid acquisitions can pose a risk now they short up their financial systems so that they can very quickly add these companies under their umbrella and start to aggregate the financials. It appears that there isn't much more integration than that at the moment, though they'll, they've been talking about realizing some synergies across these different units. Um, just remember that Bico Group is still a fairly small firm, the $1.3 billion market cap. And the last thing to mention is that in their stated goals for 2022, they talked about continuing to make acquisitions and they also talked about profitability. So it's quite interesting. We don't typically focus on that. We focus only on revenues, but in trying times when funding can often dry up and the availability of funding becomes difficult to find, then profitability is a good thing. So that's probably a good thing for Bico Group to focus on along with their continued growth by acquisition. So 
Um, I'll put the accompanying research pieces for this video in the description along with um, some other bits. And if you have any comments, please just post them on YouTube. We'll answer them um, as they come up so that everybody can uh, benefit from the questions that are being asked. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel. And thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video today.